The next few lectures are going to talk about exponents. It is very, very important that you take the time to understand exponents now in the next few lectures, because this material will come over and over again, not just in the material we're discussing in these series of lectures, but also in other courses that you might take in mathematics. So the foundation of many, many different concepts lies in the concept of exponents. All right, so let's start with what you already know. In the decimal number system, we've already used exponents uh, when we were writing numbers in expanded form. So here we have 324, so 3 times 10 squared. Remember, we defined 10 squared as 10 times 10 or 100. So if you recall that 10 to a power just means 10 times 10 times 10, n times, where n is a counting number. So in mathematics, playing means if you replace the 10 with any real number, what do you think a to the n should stand for? We're saying in order to be consistent with the 10 to the n interpretation, we should have a times a times a n times. The number n is called the exponent and the number a is called the base. If you learn how to read, write, interpret correctly base to exponents, identifying base and exponents will help you understand many, many concepts, and you will avoid making many arithmetic mistakes. Again, it is uh, paramount that you understand this notation. You might say to yourself, this is so easy. Why is she taking so much time? The reason is because understanding what is base and exponent is going to help you in understanding many, many concepts. So let's see if you understand the concept of base and exponent. Why don't you evaluate 2 to the third? I will give you for uh, 30 seconds or so. Just write out what it means. And then also identify what is the 3, identify what is the base. See if you can speak out loud how you would read this. All right, so assuming you've done that, we have 2 to the power 3, or 2 to the exponent of 3, or 2 to the third. That's how you might read it to make sure that you understand what's the base and what's the exponent. So base is 2 and exponent is 3. If you got that, you are in good shape here. All right, so 2 to the third is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, 3 times, which will give you what? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So now we have negative 5 to the third. In the same manner, see if you can evaluate it. So base is negative 5, exponent is 3. And how would you read it? You're going to say negative 5 raised to the power of 3. Or you can say negative 5 to the power 3 or negative 5 to the third. That's how you would read it. So to compute it, uh, it's very, very important to remember how the 3 power, the exponent of 3, belongs to the negative 5. So it's negative 5 that's going to get multiplied by itself 3 times. Negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, which will give you negative 125. Now, what do you think happens here? How is what is here different than what is here? Look at how it's written. Here, the 3 exponent belongs to the negative 5, whereas here, the exponent of 2 belongs just to that 4. So the base is going to be 4, exponent is 2. So if I have base and exponent, which means you're going to have 4 times 4 because the exponent belongs to the base of 4. So as you can see, the negative sign is not part of the base. So how do you read this? See here, number 2, we read that as it's negative 5 raised to the power 3. Whereas here, you're going to read that as negative of 4 raised to the power of 2. Do you see the difference? Negative 5 raised to the third power versus negative of 4 to the second power. 
it is very, very important you learn to read this distinction. It will prevent you many, many headaches. So this is negative of 4 times 4 because the exponent belongs just to the base of 4. So you're going to have negative of 4 times 4, which is 16, so negative 16. So it's almost like you have a parenthesis after the negative, and then you're doing whatever you want. So the negative does not belong inside the parentheses of 5 like it did here, but on the outside. So make sure you understand that. All right, so right now, let's take a look at a squared. So a is the base, 2 is the exponent, so a times a. Even if you don't know what functions are or what f of x stands for, it doesn't matter what we're trying to understand. Uh, what we're trying to make sure is that you understand what's the base, what's the exponent, and what it represents. So negative of f of x to the third power. So negative of whatever quantity to the third power means that quantity multiplied three times, but the negative stays on the outside. Here we're taking ab to the fifth power. Remember what we said. It's Whatever is in the parentheses, that's who the exponent belongs to. So it's AB times AB times AB times AB times AB five times. Base is AB, exponent is five. How about that? There are many, many bases and exponents here. So you can see how the first base is right there. A to the second, C to the third is your base. Exponent is four. So it's that quantity that's going to get multiplied four times. But then in a squared c cubed, a is the base, 2 is the exponent. c cubed, c is the base, 3 is the exponent. So if we ask you to write base and exponent, it's very important that you figure out uh, what's the base and what's the exponent. All right, so let's see if you can uh, do the next few problems on your own. Write down the base and write down the exponent. And in your head, process what it means. Does the negative belong to the base, or does the negative belong on the outside? Assuming you've come back, let's check what you've gotten. We can't move forward until you really understand this. So check. If you did not get the solutions correct, make sure that you go back and review everything. So again, identify base, identify exponents. Pause the video here, please. Are you pausing? It's important that you understand this. If you don't spend the time now, it will cost you time many, many times fold later. So do really understand. Even if it looks simple, go through the motions. Just trust me. It's important that you at least try. Even if you get things wrong, it's OK. Did you get them right? See which ones you got wrong. If you got them wrong, go back and see what you missed in the presentation. All right, try these. Are you pausing? See how many you got correct out of the 14. And if you don't have 14 out of 14, you better go back and review.